The 2021 FIFA Arab Cup continues today and a very warm welcome to Qatar. Well, a little chill in the air at the magnificent Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor City, some 50 kilometers north of the capital Doha, for a Group B game in the 10th edition of the Arab Cup, but the first under the jurisdiction of FIFA. And a very excited crowd, plenty of Syrian support here. Tunisia looked very, very good in their opening group match victory you have to feel that Tunisia will be favourites to get another three points perhaps on the board tonight Tunisia seen along with their North African neighbours Egypt, Morocco and Algeria as very strong contenders at the very least to travel deep into the competition and you would think there's a strong chance the winners of the title will come from one of those four, but maybe the host Qatar might just have a different view on that. Because Qatar have qualified for the quarterfinals, as indeed have the United Arab Emirates earlier today. Should be plenty of confidence in the Tunisia ranks. After picking up those three points in that comfortable win against Mauritania, there's the United Arab Emirates sitting pretty at the top with a 100% record so far. Very late goal in their match against Mauritania. UAE coming out on top by that goal to nil. Bahrain and Iraq drew nil-nil today in Group A. Qatar got a very late goal themselves, 98th minute, an own goal in a 2-1 win against Oman to put the Qataris through to the knockout stages. Oh, what a sight, what a setting. The fans are here in numbers. Noisily excited, as we all are, for what's in store here. Tunisia looked full of verve and invention in their attacking play. Whether they'll be afforded as much time on the ball this evening to showcase those skills against Syria, well, we'll see. Syrians fought hard in their 2-1 defeat against the UAE, went close to grabbing a point late on in that match. think Syria will be easy pushovers here. FIFA Arab Cup 2021 Qatar welcomes Syria and Tunisia into the quite awesome Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor, the biggest of the six arenas being used for this tournament.
quite an atmosphere here. Teams lined up in readiness for the national anthems. Well, I think focused would be the word to describe Tunisia. They're here to win the title, they say. Syria then, Khaled Otman replaces Ibrahim Alma in goal from the opening Group B game to United Arab Emirates. The other change is in the left wing-back position where Mohamed Sayouni replaces Dia Al-Mohamed. Very important roles tonight for Mohamed Anes and Oliver Kaskaiwo to try and limit the service to Tunisia's quality attacking players. That's how we expect Syria to line up. The Act Together campaign. FIFA in partnership with the World Health Organization, supported by the Qatar Ministry of Public Health and the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy. The Act Together campaign will be observed shortly by the two captains. Interestingly enough, captains are the respective goalkeepers, but this Act Together campaign seeks to support government and authorities to work on equitable access to vaccines, tests and treatments, the tools to fight the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide. Teamwork is key and encourages everyone to follow public health measures. Charge of VAR, Adonai Escobedo of Mexico. Tunisia side shows one enforced change from the starting 11 and that handsome 5 1 win over Mauritania. It's at right back where Galan Chaleli comes in to replace. Hamza Mafluthi. He's unavailable, one of three who are in that position tonight in the squad as a whole. Mafluthi's place to Chalali then. Mohamed Ben Abi scored twice against Mauritania, as did Sefadine Jaziri. Only nine substitutes available to Tunisia, ten to their opponents. Valeriu 
Tita, Romanian, reappointed last month, very experienced around Arab nations. He's been head coach of no less than seven Arab countries. His opposite number, Monde Kebaya, appointed in August 2019, replaced the former French international Alain Gires. This man has won 16 and lost only three of his 23 games in charge. forward to seeing that young man the distinctive hairstyle Hannibal Medri who is attached to English Premier League club at Manchester United has played a senior game in his time at Old Trafford they say he has a very bright future keep an eye out for the number 10 for Tunisia 18-year-old Hannibal Mejri, Mejri Hannibal. <laughs> Countdown to kick-off, almost upon us. Wherever you are watching around the world, we welcome you. Experience the early vibes on what will it will be like when the World Cup finals themselves embrace this nation in under 12 months from now. It's action from Group B in the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021, Syria against Tunisia. This is the final match of four today in the tournament. It's a Syria team currently on a winless run in eight matches, six defeats in that time against the Tunisia side, who, in contrast, have only lost one of their last eight, winning six. Tunisia's only defeat in that time, a surprise 1 0 setback against Equatorial Guinea just three weeks ago in a World Cup qualifier. Coach Kebaya says that after that chastening experience, there'll be no signs of complacency from his team. They are favourites to rubber stamp their place in the quarterfinals with a game to spare to equal that earned today by Qatar, the hosts. Dramatic late winner for them in the match against Oman. Twice now, Oman have conceded very late goals in this tournament. Have to feel for them a little. Tunisia straight under the front foot. They've got a lot of variety in their attack. They attack you from all angles and crucially with pace. They're really going to have to be switched on here. Syria. Jaziri there who bagged a couple in that win over Mauritania. Talented squad at Kebaya's disposal. Although he is short of defenders. Three players who are marked down as absent from tonight's squad are all defenders. Giniat with the Syria throw. The Syrians looking to get on the front foot for the first time here. Decent run from Osman. Well, a bit untidy. It's going to emerge. Syria won the corner. Assistant referee says no, that will be a Tunisia goal kick.
Trying to play out from the back, Tunisia. Referee says play on. Oh, and Syria lead. Remarkable. Oliver Kaskaiwo. A surprise early lead here for Syria. Tunisia pay the price for trying to play out from the back. Got their pocket picked. To the delight of the Syrian support, Kaskaiwo fires his side in front. What a moment for the goal scorer. It's rich reward for his closing down, and on his 20th birthday, finds the back of the net. Question marks over the goalkeeper, Ben Mustafa. You feel he has to do well. He's to the pitch of the shot, and it's soft hands that allows it through. He is at full stretch. But the Tunisian goalkeeper and captain will know he ought to have done better. Looks of disbelief, but Syria are in front. Well, that's set us up for a dramatic game, I think, here tonight in Alcor. Quite stunning Al Bayt Stadium, which will stage the final. December the 18th. A particular day is a public holiday in Qatar. Sure, too many of them sporting those Syria flags dreamt the start their team have produced here. Can only gain confidence from it. Referee <laughs> doesn't like it. Yellow card. Geniak. Himself under pressure. He will need to force his way into Hannibal Mejri there. There are, incidentally, only two players, well, three now if you count. Player just booked Geniat. Only two at the start of play. Both Tunisians who were carrying a yellow card into this match. Another yellow would mean they would miss the last game of the group. Made a free kick. So we are deal with the threat. Ben Youssef was showing plenty of interest in this curling free kick. He's gone into the position he wanted. Your card for Johnny Sassi, Ali, Ben Ogani, the two Tunisians currently on a yellow card. Confirm again, Amro Geniat in the book already here for Syria. Teaching the referee to give a free kick. Play on is the call. Tunisia looking to mount an attack. They will be halted. Treatment to Mac 
Mahmoud Albaher. Challenges there. The theatrical dive over the top from Mohamed Ben Hamida. affecting Moed Dalkuli. Here's the goal again. There's only Sassi having his pocket picked by Kas Kaiwo. There's the goalkeeper's hand. It's just not strong enough, is it? And he's there. was weak joy was unbridled for Syria <laughs> on his birthday at a moment 20 year old Cas Kaiwa <laughs> throw Syria Good offer here. Getting behind the right side of that. Syria defence. Great overlap there from Ben Hamida. Tunisia corner. Syria. back to Ben Mustafa. Honorable Mesri has had the eight ability to get in between the lines. Been Syria are going to have to try and change, I think. This is expressive. Good range of passing. Sure brain, even at the tender age of 18, winning the game quickly. And Yusuf. Good oh, work. way to Doha. Really got himself settled over that. Tunisian coach on their Kabaya. Mm -hmm. 
if Syria, it's only an if at the moment because it's a long way to go, took all three points here, would really open up things in Group B where the United Arab Emirates have already qualified after winning their opening two group matches. A win here for Syria would put them level on points with Tunisia. But Syria's last match is against the bottom side without a point so far, Mauritania. Of course, would mean the UAE already through to the knockout stages will beat Tunisia. Last match in this section. for a handball there. VAR, of course, will be having a look at it. On the field, referee from Mexico, Fernando Hernandez Gomez. Another night, Escobedo, another Mexican heading up the VAR team. With a cursory glance at that, decided there was no answer for Syria. Push the ball in, just out of the reach of Jaziri. Not by much, I fancy, when we see the replay. So couldn't quite make up the ground. Was trying to get onto that cross. Fifteen or so intriguing minutes passed by here at Al Bayt. Early goal for Syria. Just in case you joined the match late, wherever you are watching, you are most welcome. Oliver Cass Kaiwo. The early strike for Syria in the red. Most of Tunisia's attacking players down that right hand side. They force the issue again here. from Syria, playing their way out methodically. We can see that Tunisia will probably have more of the ball tonight, so it is incumbent upon the Syrian players that when they do have the ball there, certainly they don't panic around their own penalty area. They certainly didn't do that out there, but he really played out from the back extremely well. I should have confidence about it. on first viewing, I have to say. I don't think it's going to be awarded as a penalty now for Ben Yusuf in Tunisia. Play on. to nearly moments for Tunisia in an attacking sense in scoring that goal down. No save of note yet for Khaled Otman in the Syria goal, away to our left. The commentary position high up in the stand. In this wonderful stadium. Clear in the end. It's 
incidentally, if you are planning to come to Qatar for next year's World Cup and book a date at the Albight, if you look at it from outside, it looks like a giant circus tent. The design, all the designs of the stadium are reflecting Qatar culture and heritage. And here comes Syria again. Going in. Yes, Ali behind for the corner. And then Mustafa. Of his near post here. Sure, he was quite aware of his ankles, the goalkeeper. Put a gift to the corner of this for Syria. With the ball really well there, the teenager. It's a play to Ben Yusuf. Opportunity for Ben Hamida to get a cross in. Does so. by Sehuni. All he could do was to concede the corner. a vital touch looked to me like a Syrian touch took it behind let's see and a two on one a far post Tunisia maybe just came off Bill El oh, it's on the back of his head I don't know who's given in the end I thought it just took a little touch off a Syrian body his midriff Sent some pain there Not by Ben Youssef Tunisia were one of nine teams along with the hosts Qatar who didn't need to qualify for this Arab Cup 2021 Qatar teams were allowed a free passage due to their ranking seven teams who have to come through a qualifying round in Qatar earlier this year Syria also got through without the need 
to join that qualifying round. Teams that did come through were Sudan, Oman, Jordan, Mauritania, Lebanon, Palestine and Bahrain. Really busy, doesn't he? The 18 year old Hannibal Mejri plays with no fear, just on the way with the youngsters. Here's Hannibal Mejri again. Supported by Ben Hamadi, but the way through. Even though Tunisia Trail has shown their quality to get real expanse in their attacking play, they use the full extremities of this pitch, real width in their attacks. Ben Yusuf down the right, and Ben Hamadi on the left. Still don't think Syria have solved the puzzle of Hannibal Mejri because he is still finding space in between the lines. Mentioned at the start, it was really important as far as Syria were concerned that Mohamed Anes and Oliver Kaskaiwo tried to cut off the route of service to the talented front players for Tunisia. They to work hard to do that right now. Here come Tunisia again. Once again, it's Ben Hamadi. Annabelle Mejri. Ben Hamadi, left-footed delivery once more, but beyond Ben Youssef. Ben Hamida. I'm not afraid to press high at times, Syria. Brave approach. do a fair amount of defending since going a goal up but it's not as if they're setting their stall out to develop a low block and just try and keep Tunisia out that would be inviting trouble against a team as talented as this one they're looking to play on the capture attack Syria Saw one there as so he had a little coming together with Al Kuli. Nothing much. 
much the Syrian defender could do to get out of the way of Ben Hamida there. over 60,000 this arena holds. Watching very interesting Group B match, the 10th edition of the Arab Cup, the very first to come under the umbrella of FIFA. The here for Alculi. But Hamida is okay as far as that clash was concerned. Tunisian left back is all, all right to continue, but there's maybe a little bit of blurred vision here for Alculi. He's signaling that he's going to be okay. Caught by the right forearm there of Ben Hamida. I think the referee is saying that you're going to have to go off before you come back on. That's what our Mexican referee is saying here to Moed Alculi. Saying I'm okay. Well, you are now. Just get to the touchline here, Al Cooley. Test the referee's patience anymore. I think it was the length of time that he was down. He's drawn the referee to that uh, decision. It's much ado about nothing because it took a split second for Al Cooley to get back with us. Meter seen the ball as much as anyone in the opening 31 minutes or so. This has a little measure here. Seen a great deal of Jaziri and Ben Arby up to now. Two players have got a couple of goals each in the opening group game against Mauritania. It's been the wide men that have been on the ball and number 10, if you like, and a little measure. Been uh, pulling the strings in the main. I'm sure they want to get their two central forward players into the action a little more. Tunisia, who build once more. Measure, the measure. Ball for Ben Yusuf. Likes to come in from that flank from out to in. Ben Yusuf is very tall. In Tunisia, number eight, playing on the right side of their attack. Could be a potential weapon at some stage. Crosses into his area with the height advantage he's got. Syria have, incidentally, three times been runners-up in the Arab Cup. The very first one in 1963, then three years later, and finally in 1988, Tunisia were the first champions in 63. Ben Hamadi. A 
space developing here for Tunisia. The work to prevent the corner. Corner to Tunisia. Aaron Diaz Medina, the assistant on that far side. Taken quickly by Tunisia. Time to catch Syria unawares. Will be another corner. Mohammed Ben Abi will take. This is club football in the United Arab Emirates. Nice flight on that. Won't be retrieved. Syria heads towards the final ten minutes of this first half with their lead intact. Tunisia had 19 attempts on Mauritania's goal in their opening group B match. 11 of those on target was the most of any of the 16 teams here in the first round of group games. They're not going to be short of their attempts at the Syrian goal tonight, I don't think. However, for all the possession that they've had and some promising attacking moves, Opman, Syrian goalkeeper, still not had a save of note to make. This is the first meeting of these two teams since 1988. Their only previous meeting was on in that first Arab Cup. Back in 1963. Mohamed Sehouni on the end of this. Looked rather innocuous, but... Looks in uh, some distress there. Contact. Sometimes angles, though, when we look at the replay, can be deceiving. You have to feel that he is hurt here. Let's have another look. Slow mo. Right up close. Uh, Yep, there it is. Ben Arby. Chopping down on the foot. The ailing Sehuni. They don't see much, but if you've been on the end of one of those, you know they can be painful. Sixteen national teams from across the Arab world have gathered together in Qatar. This FIFA Arab Cup, a prelude, of course, for the World Cup itself in less than 12 months from now. The fans here talking excitedly about what's to come in 2022. Many of them, of course, will be back. Many more. be able to experience the delights of Qatar for the very first time. Of those 16 national teams. Six have come from Africa, including, of course, Tunisia and their North African neighbours, Morocco, Egypt, Algeria, Mauritania here and Sudan. So finally, the game is going to resume. 
just adding to what will be a fairly lengthy period to be added on by our Mexican referee once we get to 45. Jaziri had too many touches so far. Movement's very good. Safadine Jaziri. So Guni, as you saw, back on. So Syria up to their full complement of 11 again. Annabel Mejri. Syria working really hard to keep their shape. Three or four times they've been pulled out of position. Wouldn't criticize them too much for that. This is a very talented Tunisia side, full of creativity. Striving hard to get themselves on terms before half time. of the ball Tunisia would have expected to have had in 40 odd minutes for Johnny Sassi is going to leave the throw here for Chalali Hemida. Oh, he's won a corner to the frustration of Amro Giniat. Just gets a little march there. He thinks it should be a free kick. Referee says corner. Another old measure to take. Develop into one of the stars of this Arab Cup, Tunisia number 10. Catching practice in the end for Hotman. There is this club football for Al Itihad in his native Syria, the goalkeeper, the captain. A number of these Syrian players play in Bahrain. Several of them with the predominant club in Bahrain, Al Rifa. Bahrain are here in this competition. Lost to the hosts Qatar in their opening Group A match and then had a draw earlier today against Iraq. Just in case you're unaware of the matches that were completed today, this is the last of four. Qatar have qualified for the knockout stages with a group game to spare. They made it two wins out of two after beating the Bahrainis 1-0 in their opening match and then 2-1 today against Oman. A very late goal, an own goal. Delighting the home fans. An untidy passage of play there, referee deciding think in Kuma's favour not so much the free kick but maybe the throw has gone Syria's way, let's see what the referee's decided upon here he's given a free kick to Syria
congratulations in order as well to the United Arab Emirates, who, like Qatar, have qualified for the knockout stages with a group game to spare in this group. They beat Mauritania with a, another late goal. It's been a tournament of late goals this uh, Arab Cup Qatar 2021. And, uh, the FIFA umbrella for the first time this competition. Tunisia, strong favourites to join the UAE in the knockout stages. And it's not going to plan as far as they're concerned. Syria obdurate opponents haven't done much attacking since getting that surprise early goal for Oliver Kaskaiwo. It's been mostly Syria defending the goal away to our left. One half of the job very well completed for the team in red. But they've got six minutes, a minimum of six, to negotiate before they can look upon a half time advantage. This is where they need to retain possession if they can. Good press, though, from Tunisia. Syria reply in kind. I think he enjoyed that. Al Salam urging his teammates for several minutes of total concentration here to maintain their advantage barely seen anything of Ward Al Salam in this first half he got the goal in that opening defeat in the group to the UAE Another stoppage for injury. It's not a good challenge, is it, by Jaziri? It's the unfortunate Al Cooley who's on the end of that again. Forward by Al Cooley. Final game for Kepayas Tunisia is this coming Monday at the Al Tumama Stadium in Doha. Syria will be off to the Al Janoub. Arena in Al Wakra to play Mauritania. And if they can go there with three points in this match, I have to say a surprise three points, they'd have a great chance, Syria, of qualifying for the quarter finals. Top two teams in each of the four groups progress. Kaskaiwo, the goal scorer. Wants it again, Kaskaiwo. A little deeper though, and so we look to reach that Tunisia penalty area. Can't do so. Can't do now. Armlessly across the face and eats up a little bit more vital time, you would think, for Syria. Just over two minutes away in a very happy dressing room. Ben Arby. 
nice touch of Sehuni. Tunisia had the corner. Yeah, corners have carried quality from both sides in this first half. Tunisia. Ben Abi drops invitingly for Hannibal Mejri. It's closed down very well. And then Bill Alifa with an ambitious effort from range. Delighted Syrian support. Sehuni. Play by Maria. Space now for the raiding Mohammed Ben Hamida. A good understanding with young Mejri. Can't do much with the header. Stretching for that. Danes, the latest to go down nursing an injury, Alfari had a yellow card out, just dropped it back in his pocket. Some concern there for Anes. Medics were beckoned on quickly to get to his aid. Sets of players are expressing a little concern here for Mohamed Anes. Lost a clash of heads, I don't think. It's just maybe an arm that caught Anes there. from uh, Ben Romdani. Both players had genuine eyes for the ball rather than the opponent. Already into the eighth minute of time added on at the end of the first half. And it's going to be at least another minute or so. Here you are checking for a possible red card. Head of VAR is asking our on-pitch referee, the two Mexicans involved here, the on-pitch referee, Fernando Hernandez Gomez, is coming to the referee's review area on the call from his fellow Mexican, Adonai Escobedo, to determine whether this is going to be a red card for Ali Ben Romdani. It's the point of the elbow, I think. He's He's using his arms to get up there, but does he throw it back into... Oh, he maybe catches him in the head. I wasn't sure whether I was right initially to say he wasn't caught in the head. I think he was, but was there a deliberate act from Romdani? That's what the referee's got to make his mind up upon. 
Well, this is a nervy moment for Tunisia. Is this going to be a red card for Ali Ben Romdani? I think it is red. Well, Tunisia are clearly unhappy about that. And Romdani is going to walk. The midfielder from Esperance out of the final group game. Now, food for thought for coach Monder Kebaya. It's just the movement of the arm, really. I mean, you have to raise your arms to get the leverage to climb for a ball like this, but it, it just moves into the opponent. VAR have determined. Of course, it's the on-pitch referee's final call, having been called to his review area. Fernando Hernandez Gomez decided having seen it and seen it and seen it again that that was worthy of a red card for Ben Romdani. See the damage on the cheekbone there. Mohamed Anis is going to continue, I think, Syria a goal up and a man up. As so we're about to tiptoe into the 12th minute of time added on at the end of this first half. Might be calling from a breakfast soon. Time, incidentally, local in Qatar is approaching four minutes to 11 o'clock. Referee decides to call an end to her first half, which has been feisty and had a real surprise when that youngster on his 20th birthday to match the number on his shirt, Oliver Kaskaiwo, after only four minutes scored for Syria. It's been mostly Tunisia attacking since then, Syria with some stout defending. Half time, Syria won, Tunisia nil.
Well, here's how the first half shaped up at the Albait Stadium in Group B of the 10th edition of the Arab Cup. Tunisia with three times as many attempts at goal, are equal in terms of those on target. Plenty of corners for Tunisia, but no way through against the stubborn Syria so far. And of course, a red card for Tunisia. Magnificent Al Bight Stadium in Al Khor City, some 50 kilometers north of the capital Doha, staging the Group B game between Syria and Tunisia. Tunisia coming into this game on the back of a handsome 5 1 win over Mauritania. Syria losing their opening match against the United Arab Emirates. But Fajani Sassi trying to play out from the back. And his pocket pick by Oliver Kass Kaiwo. And on the occasion of his 20th birthday, the Syrian number 20 fired his side in front after just four minutes. Sassi, too deliberate in possession. Goalkeeper will ask a question of himself that he should have saved it. Confidence was coursing through the veins of Syria at this stage. They even had designs on stretching their advantage. Short save by Ben Mustafa. Even though it was travelling wide of his near post. Shot coming in from Mahmoud Albaher. Valerio. Tita, the Romanian head coach of Syria, delighted with the start that his team made. Succession of corners in the first half for Tunisia. And an overload beyond the far post there. But it was a vital touch from Amro Geniat. Had he not made it, the number six for Syria here, I think Ifa or Ben Youssef might be scoring. Then a moment of drama in first half stoppage time. A collision between Mohamed Anes and the Tunisian midfielder Ali Ben Romdani. Anes in a lot of pain. VAR checked the challenge. The referee didn't give the red card initially, but he did subsequently, having come to his review area, reviewed the decision and shown the red card to Ben Romdani. Half time in Group B, Syria 1, Tunisia 0.
Welcome back to the Al Bayt Stadium. Very interesting night developing here in Group B. With Syria leading the favourites before a ball was kicked here in Al Khor City. Tunisia by a goal to nil. Tunisia also having a man sent off, Ali Ben Robdani, 
in first half stoppage time after the referee went to the review area at the side of the pitch urged by the head of the VAR team heading up VAR Adonai Escobedo the on-pitch referee Fernando Hernandez Gomez didn't take any action initially when the challenge from Ben Romdani came in on Mohamed Anes still nursing that plaster above a, a damaged cheekbone but on review referee decided Ben Romdani his challenge was worthy of a straight red card so that fourth minute goal from Oliver Cass Kaiwo and Syria still have a lead to defend here confirm a Tunisia change at half-time as well. Fakhreddin Ben Youssef has been replaced by Naeem Sliti. A good opportunity now for Syria to see more of the ball <laughs> working their way forward here Syria trying to find the gaps and they've done that they lead 2-0 sensational and it's the man who was involved in the sending off of Ben Ramdani in first half stoppage time who scored it Mohamed Aniz with the goal of his dreams You may hurt me, but I'll bounce back. And it's Monde Kabaya's Tunisia who are hurt. Not down and out yet, there's a long way to go. But how about this for a finish? Out of his feet. And quite beautifully curling it beyond a helpless Ben Mustafa. From a long way in its travel, it looked dangerous. And finally in off the underside of the crossbar. 2-0 Syria. Now, what have Tunisia got by way of reply here? Well, it's going to be a yellow card. Can't have any complaints about that, Al Cooley. Sleety, the second half substitute, running with purpose there. Well, the stadium is almost in disbelief here at this scoreline. and Ben Arby either side of this set piece Maria the number four is the deepest of the white shirted Tunisians here Annabelle Meshri well they need Meshri to step up here they Reading left back, Ben Hamida. 
two goal scorers with two goals each in the opening group game. Jaziri and Ben Arby. So even though they're down to 10 and 2 0 down, you wouldn't rule out Tunisia comeback at this stage. Difficult though it undoubtedly is going to be. There's strong belief. They say Tunisia, they've come here to win the title. Many people fancy them. Many people fancy them for three points here. They take a point now, that is for sure. United Arab Emirates would have been expecting to have rubber stamped their place in the knockout stages, believing that Syria wouldn't win against Tunisia. But if Syria do, it just leaves a little nagging doubt for the UAE. They would not be officially through. Could all get very tight, down to goal differences and whatever. Remember, the UAE play Tunisia in the final round in this Group B, which means, of course, that Syria would have the easier of the final games, on paper at least, against pointless Mauritania. I think some of us were rather getting ahead of it in terms of... Uh, forecast on what's developing in terms of knockout places. Qatar, the one team definitely through to the quarter-final stage. Second successive win for the hosts. 98th minute own goal. 2-1 win against Oman. Annabel Mejri. Aoife. form book absolutely being turned on its head here when you look at the recent run of results of these two nations Ben Arby too close to a great fall Khaled Ottman. Syria coming into this match on a run of eight games without a win. Six defeats in that time. Tunisia's last eight, they've lost only one and won six. That's football for you. You can surprise at any given turn. What a platform if Syria hold what they have to go forward. Tunisia are caught between two stools a little here. 
I mean, they can't go gung ho, and I think that would have been the message from the coach Monde Kebaya at half time. Look, let's not be too rash in our attacking play. We've got 45 minutes to get a goal back. That's what he'd have been talking about, but now it's two that they need back. It's Ben Arby, two goal hero, one of the heroes of that 5 1 win against Mauritania, has made way. As you can see, Yusuf. Was Musakni from the Al Arabi club? This is good football in Qatar. Experienced player Musnaki. See if he can uh, produce something. But yeah, just to develop that uh, talk of being caught between two stools for Tunisia. They don't want to get rush and send too many players forward at this relatively early stage of the second half and get caught as a serious score the next goal that probably would be game over Syria well aware even though they are a man down that they've got the quality still to hurt Syria and they've got time on their hands to do it Turn from Sleety. He's going to get a free kick for that. Just tap for a little bit of pace there. Sayuni. Tunisia have taken off one of their tallest players in Ben Youssef at half time. And still an imposing presence in that Syria penalty area. Naeem Sleety poised to deliver. People think about coming and makes a fine save. Well, he was nearly caught out there, Ottman. She can see it come once more. And that was very nearly a goal back. Bilal Ifa denied by Ottman. Referee playing a good advantage here for Tunisia. He was going to blow and then decided no. Tunisia still had good possession. Shalali. Changed the point of play there, but Jeniak was alive to it. Still not the opportunity to review that header from Ifa. What a very good save out of Ottman. Referee right on the spot there as Hannibal Meshi was taken down unceremoniously. Happy feet of Meshi, too cute. Here's the header from Ifa. Looked in, didn't it? Hoffman. She had a strong right hand in the end. Almost an hour gone, but I'll bite in Group B. 
the Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Sleety, I think he fancies a shot of goal here. Stares at the target. Measury just joining that Syrian war. Heels away now, and it is Sleety! Goalkeeper barely moved, I think he knew it was curling wide. Let's watch Otman here, I think he's got everything covered. Tunisia couldn't cover this. That was quite delightful, wasn't it, for Mohamed Anis. He sees it coming a long way. He gets more and more anguish, Ben Mustafa, as it travelled in off the underside of his crossbar. Super goal. <laughs> Sayuni. Kaskaiwo. Syria certainly weren't getting time on the ball like this when we were 11 against 11. It's a glorious position for them to provide the surprise. The biggest surprise, I don't think anyone would argue, of this Arab Cup if Syria were to take all three points against the fancy Tunisians. doesn't he, Kebaya? Every good reason to be. Space here for Sleety. Thought about the volley and drove it in fiercely. No direction to trouble Ottman. Been lively since he came on though at half time. Nine Sleety. Run there by the substitute Sekni. Tunisia corner. Brings Maria and Ifa forward from the back. Sleety. Everybody back behind the ball for Syria. Now the white shirts gather in the middle, expectant of a cross. They got into a good position here, there's way too much on that. Always stretching for it, the willing Ben Hamida. They didn't turn up expecting this, did they, Tunisian fans? Who did?
Maria. Aoife. Sleety. possible Tunisia to get a front three appointed it's not easy when you're a player down always a possibility Syria could win possession and produce the swift counter-attack that might just finish the game off but at the moment I'd say there were signs that Tunisia might be capable of getting the goal back here 10-man Tunisia, they've got a corner. Still having to work hard here, the 11 men of Syria. About to be augmented with fresh legs. Ship will change on the way, it would seem. Anibal Mejri, still over a quarter of the game remaining. way through and its way over Sassi with the attempt Moxley changes Kamel Pumeshe and Mohamed Riani Two of the players who are going to be coming on shortly for Syria. Both midfield players. I think it's in that engine room where the coach of Syria, Valerio Tita, will be looking just to get those fresh legs working and Stop the likes of Hannibal Mejri from getting on the ball, the Tunisia number 10, and pulling the strings. So even though they are a man down, they're seeing plenty of the ball, but there is an element now that Syria are protecting what they have. So here come the three changes, two players I've already mentioned. The other is Mohamed Al Halak, number seven. So the departure of Mahmoud Al Baher. Oliver Kas Kaiwo, who opened the scoring this evening, and Ward Al Salam are the other two who are departing. Well, understandable triple change here from the Syria head coach. Just sensing that Tunisia's danger was growing. We were creating one or two good moments in and around that Syria penalty area. Should be tidied up. Oh, misunderstanding. Goalkeeper was looking to strike through that Ben Mustafa, but communication lines were not very clear there. Maria, who decided to take it off the toe of his keeper. Here's a chance, not taken by Jaziri. Tunisian fans got excited there. Poor header. Virginia not punished by Jaziri. Choked on the effort. Change, as you can see now, for Tunisia and Jaziri's last action, that shot at goal. 
he will be replaced by Said Bugur. Really are slick, Tunisia. And they put their attacking moves together. That's good work in midfield from Syria. Now they can pick the pocket, maybe. No. Important interception there from Maria. That was the best uh, ball out, certainly wasn't from goalkeeper Ottman. Ultimately not damaging. Surprise choice of pass there from the Syrian keeper. Sleety just lost his footing. Basically, Sleety and Masakni now operating as a front two for ten-man Tunisia. Got to try and keep two strikers up there. Just empties them a little bit in midfield. to win the race there, Al Halak. <laughs> Measury. Well, the measure the pass. And just drifting out of the game a little bit now, the Tunisia number 10. Has to be good news for Syria. It's the right choice of pass, but it just carried too much weight. Reappointing their Romanian head coach Valerio Tita. They sacked the previous head coach Nizar Mahruz just two weeks ago after just seven games in charge. Only appointed in July and no wins in that time. Mahruz was shown the door. Card confirmed for Galen Chalali. <laughs> the 
Approaching the final quarter of an hour of normal time. That little spell of seven or eight minutes of Tunisian pressure is now abated. And Syria at the moment looking comfortable. This has been a tournament so far of late goals, some of them very, very late. So let's not assume anything at this relatively early stage, shall we? Corner Tunisia. Safety. Measuring. Two signs that Tunisia are beginning to run out of ideas. Frustration for Ben Hamida offers so much down that left hand side for Tunisia. A reminder that Tunisia's final game in this Group B is against the United Arab. Emirates on Monday at the Al Tamama Stadium in Doha. Syria will be off to Al Wakra to face Mauritania on Monday in their final match. It's the Al Janoub Stadium. Six of the eight arenas that will be used for next year's World Cup are in use here. through here, massive red shirts there. Still trying to get width into their attacks, it's the right way to go in my view. defenders now it's almost a back six back seven at times here for Syria understandable from their point of view they're asking Tunisia are you good enough to break us down Driving hard here for the goal that could yet make it a nervous finale to the game for Syria. It's Tunisia to drive forward again, yet again with Ben Hamida. It's out for the corner, conceded by Giniat. Sleety will take this corner. Crossbar had to snatch at it quickly under pressure. That goal from Mohamed and is memorable from a personal point of view for him. But this was the moment really that gave Syria that breathing space. How good did that feel for the coach and his staff? Let alone the goal scorer. Wonderful.
Funny old game, eh? Look at that for attempts. And Syria are 2 0 up. Searching ball this time. Goalkeeper commits. The right decision in the end from Ottman. Inside the final ten minutes of normal time now. One of the highest ranked teams in Africa. Trailing to Syria. Only Senegal and Morocco are currently ranked higher than Tunisia on the African continent. Syria change. Osman coming off. He will be replaced by Ali Bashmani. Striker gets his first involvement at this Arab Cup. Syria do go on to complete the victory here we could get a situation where it would get very interesting indeed at the top of this section well, we may end up with three teams on six points go down the goal difference goal scored and all that we'll visit that one if it comes around more and more likely as if Syria are going to draw level with Tunisia in terms of uh, number of points they'll be on three UAE remember are on six but they play Tunisia UAE in the last match they're not definitely through at this stage well before a ball was kicked here at Albaid it looked highly likely that would be the case because the only way that they wouldn't have been through with a a game to spare in the group. As if, if Syria won, and they are winning. A defeat or a draw for Syria was very good news for the UAE. Tunisia preparing to make another substitution in a moment. Well kept in by Ottman. <laughs> it's 
Sosa. Sloppy from Syria. Allotman down to make the save. Shake of the head. For Mazakni. Yusuf Mazakni. It sat up beautifully for him. Didn't really get hold of it. Syria, I mean, nearly the architects of their own downfall there. Mutez Zadem is the player who's been waiting patiently to get on for Tunisia. He'll have his opportunity now. Johnny Sassi, player whose mistake led to that early Syrian first goal in the, just the fourth minute. The place now by Zadeh. Four minutes plus time to be added on for Syria to see it through to a conclusion. Tried all they know. Tunisia just can't break down this stubborn Syrian defence. So difficult now for Tunisia to find the gaps. And here's an opportunity and it's mistimed. Charlie who advanced from his defensive right-sided position in the main this evening. And he got in front of his marker too. With that, those Tunisia's hopes rather sums up their evening. Result that really opens up Group B for the final round of matches to come on Monday. Syria to play the bottom side Mauritania. Very interesting matchup between Tunisia and the UAE. Here's Annabel Mejri still trying to make it a nervous last few moments for Syria. They're covering everything now, the red shirts. really enjoy the look of their defensive shape I know they've got a player advantage and that helps but concentration levels have been really high in the last seven or eight minutes a heavy chance for Chinali apart from that a couple of well there was one for Masagni as well that he might have done better with so there have been some chances there I think have come at the right time from the coach 
of Syria, Valerio Tita. If they're going to produce the surprise comeback now, they're doing it in stoppage time, Tunisia. But only three minutes, a minimum of three. Surely they will see this out. the space can they put the gloss on it with a third maybe always the danger in the very latter stages that Tunisia would get caught with players up the pitch chance opened up there for Riani here for Syria, allowed to come a long way, Tunisia. Masakni was looking for a pass, nobody really offering an angle. But he's in here, Masakni, stretching, Sleety, goalkeeper commits. And Mejri. Well, what an inviting target that was for Hannibal Mejri. Looked as though the chance was there initially for Masekni, then Sleety. Goalkeeper was flat on the ground, out of position. A lovely ball played there to Masekni. Sleety couldn't help it in. Look at the goalkeeper's commitment there. And when it dropped for Mejri, you'd expect him to hit the target. about a deflection, it should have been a corner. I don't think they were asking for any kind of handball, I didn't see an incident like that. I just think they were looking for a corner there, Tunisia. Let's have a look. Ah, neat header from the referee. Would have been interesting had it gone in. Pretty sure it wouldn't have counted. Very, very late change from Syria. We'll bring on Faris on out to replace Mohamed Sayuni. I think they might have decided against it because the three minutes are up. They don't need to run the clock down. Tunisia has spent. And a memorable day for Syria. best international wins for some considerable time. Final moments being played out here at the Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor City. Syria are competitive in Group B. No question about it now. Tunisia turned up here after a 5-1 win against Mauritania, thinking, well, even if we draw, we're in a great position. Many people fancy them for the win, but the three points are bagged by Syria to the delight of their supporters inside the arena. A wonderful goal to remember in the second half from Mohamed Anes as the coach Tita and his staff embrace and the substitutes on the touchline. I think almost that they'd won the title. Long way to go. Kaiwo's early goal did some damage too. Full time, Syria 2, Tunisia 0. Well, what a victory this is for Syria go into their final group game against Mauritania in buoyant mood.
They will see themselves as strong favourites now to qualify for the quarterfinals. But if Tunisia beat the United Arab Emirates, as I mentioned earlier, we could have three teams finishing on six points, so it could get very, very interesting. Coach won't want the celebrations to last too long. It's a very important game coming up as early as Monday against Mauritania. Tunisia have to pick themselves off the floor and go again against the UAE. And for now, let's take nothing away from Valerio Tito, the Romanian head coach of Syria, and his players. A fine performance. ياسين خسارة مفاجأة بعد المردود في المباراة الأولى اليوم المنتخب التونسي في كل بداية شوط يقبل هدف في كلفه خسارة ثقيلة اليوم أكيد اليوم ما كناش ننتظر سكور هذا ما كناش ننتظر النتيجة كي عملنا برمي تو شوط أول للنسيان حاولنا نتجاوز الشوط الثاني لكن كانت مهمة صعبة بالواقع الحمراء برشا ملاعبية حاولت ترجع في السكور حاولت ترجع في النتيجة ما إن شاء الله الماتش الجاي نربحوا ونقلوا الكالفيكاسيون إن شاء الله. ياسين بصراحة لماذا غاب رد الفعل عن المنتخب التونسي اليوم رغم أنه الهدف الأول كان في توقيت مبكر؟ ما كناش مركزين 100% برشا ملاعبية ما كانتش مركزة إن شاء الله نتجاوزوا الشيء هذا في الماتش الجاي إن شاء الله نحاولوا نركزوا أكثر ونجيبوا ثلاثة نقاط تاعنا إن شاء الله. ياسين سؤال أخير هل هو إفراط في الثقة من استسهال المنافس اليوم؟ والله لا مش فات الثقة حكينا برشا الملاعبية بينات بعضنا قلنا اللي مش يكون ماتش صعيب مي البونتو الأول فاجئنا وحتى حكي حاولنا نرجعوا في السكور جات الواقع حملة ومن بعد ولات المهمة صعبة برشا شكرا يا سيدي Congrats, uh, coach. Very important win and hard time on tough game. Yes, I am. Je suis, je suis très satisfait parce que nous avons fait un bon résultat après le défaut contre l'équipe du Emirat. J'ai remercié à tous les spectateurs qui ont été euh, avec nous. J'ai averti avant du match hier en conférence de presse que nous, Syria aujourd'hui va donner tout et se va battre pour chaque ballon. Syria now can qualify. What's your ambition for Mauritania game? Yes, now uh, must must forget this game because coming another game against Mauritania before all the game, all the fans think that it's easy game, but it's not easy game. Must repeat the same game for uh, the same day uh, to, for today. Thank you very much. انتصار مهم كابتن خالد انتصار مهم على منتخب صعب الى اي مدى اثر اليوم تسجيل الهدف المبكر في المباراه من اجل تحقيق هذا الانتصار بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اول شيء بنقول الحمد لله رب العالمين اولا واخيرا هو كان توفيق الله عز وجل اول شيء كنا نحن بصراحه عم نلعب لهالجمهور عم نلعب لكل واحد لشخصه لهذا البلد بصراحة الجول الهدف الأول أكيد هو أعطانا دافع معنوي كتير قوي وخاصة عم تلعب مع تونس واللي هو كان مرشح الأول مرشح الأول بهي المجموعة 
حسنا نحن بصراحة نطبق الشيء اللي طلبه المدرب مع العلم انه كانت المباراة الأولى نفس الكلام ولكن ضغط البداية كانت هي صعبة شوي وهذا دليل الشوط الثاني نحن تحسنا بالمباراة الأولى والمباراة الثانية أكيد الهدف هو عملنا دافع كثير كبير أنت بتعرف أهم شيء في المباراة في بداية المباراة خمس أول خمس دقائق آخر خمس دقائق في بداية الشوط الثاني كمان الجول الثاني هو أثر يعني أعطانا شيء أكبر من هيك يعني الحمد لله تعرض المنتخب التونسي أو لاعب منقوصا طوال الشوط الثاني هل ذلك ساعدكم في تحقيق هذا الانتصار بسهولة أكثر؟ أكيد أكيد لأنه هن كان خوتهم بالوسط حتى الكابتن بالكوتش قبل المباراة بيوم يومين اشتغلنا كثير على هذا الموضوع شلون بيعززوا الوسط للهجوم أكيد هذا الطرد كثير أثر عليهم نفسيا وخاصة أول خمس دقائق بالشوط الثاني كمان سجلنا الجول الثاني هذا شيء أكد عزز علينا القوة أكثر ومعنوياتهم نزلت ممكن أكثر من هيك ما هي تطلعاتكم اليوم لمباراة موريتانيا؟ أكيد هي هذا الفوز راح يكبر طموح أكثر وإن شاء الله طموحنا هو ثلاث نقاط نحن بالنهاية بنعمل علينا المدرب ما صار له تقريبا سبعة أيام لسا ما أخذ فكرة كاملة على الفريق بظل هذه الظروف بنقول الحمد لله رب العالمين وهي المشاركة ممكن تعملنا شغلة بعدين إن شاء الله بالتوفيق شكرا كوتش هارد لك بقدر ما كان الوجه طيب والاداء والنتيجه في المباراه الاولى بقدر ما كان المنتخب اليوم التونسي سيئا على مستوى النتيجه في بدايه الاشواط وايضا على مستوى الاداء في ظل عدم التوفيق في التهديف كابتن منظر. بدايه الشوط الاولاني ما كانتش موافقه عملنا اخطاء تكلفت لنا غالي قبلنا فيهم هدف بعد صلحنا الامور حاولنا نرجع في في المقابله خاصه على وسط الميدان في تطليع الكره. ما خلقناش برشا فرص في الشوط الاولاني، الشوط الثاني زاد كيف كيف كان توفيق كبير للمنافس في في دقيقتين لعب يعمل البريك، سورتو احنا في اخر الشوط الاولاني زدنا عملنا خطا خذينا ورقه حمراء، صعب علينا الامور خاسرين واحد بلاش وزيد نلعب ناقصين ناقصين لاعب، ما كناش محظوظين في بدايه الشوط الثاني مباشره نقبلوا هدف بتسديده بتوفيق كبير من عند المنافس. الشوط الثاني الولاد عملوا الماكسيموم تاعهم عطاوا كل ما عندهم خلقنا العديد من الفرص كنا نستحقوا اقل شيء نسجلوا هدف كان رجعنا على مستوى 2 واحد على بقري في الشوط الثاني كان تعطينا كل حافز باش نرجعوا في المقابله على مستوى النتيجه طيب منظر ترش انه المنتخب التونسي او الجهاز الفني تاخرتوا قليلا في تغيير انه كان واضح انه في شيء مش ماشي في المنتخب خاصه على الجهه اليمنى الفخر الدين بن يوسف والفريق متكامل ب 10 لاعبين عطيناهم الكل 45 دقيقة وعملنا تغيير نعيم سليتي مباشرة ما بين شوطين دخل يوسف 10 دقائق دخل سعد بقير نفس الشيء دونك هذوما اللي عندهم نفس هجومي دخلوا خلقوا العديد من الفرص لكن ما وفقناش ربي باش نسجلوا المباراة الأخيرة ستكون صعبة عكس المتوقع منذر مباراة مصيرية ما معش عندنا حتى خيار آخر لازمنا نفوزوا في المقابلات المقابلة الجاية كان نحبوا نواصلوا في الدوريات شكرا كابتن Well, a shocked and surprised Monday Kebaya after his Tunisia team were beaten by Syria by two goals to nil, despite his side having more possession. They lost a player, of course, in first half stoppage time to a straight red card, Ali Ben Romdani. Look at the attempts Tunisia had to those of their opponents, but stats don't always tell the story, and that is certainly the case this evening. Look at it in terms of corners, too.
Well, Group B action at the Al Bight Stadium in Al Khor City saw favourites Tunisia up against Syria. Tunisia only three weeks ago was surprisingly beaten in a World Cup qualifier by Equatorial Guinea. But their coach, Monde Kabaya, said that his team had learned a lesson from that. There'd be no complacency, but complacency set in after only four minutes when Fajani Sassi was caught in possession by the birthday boy. As old as the number on his shirt, Oliver Kaskaiwo, putting Syria into a surprise early lead in just the fourth minute. A goalkeeper, I feel, should do better, Ben Mustafa. Tunisia then looked for a, an early reply. Certainly they had their moments. Vital headed clearance here by Amro Geniat. Ben Youssef Eiffert had an overload at that far post. But then, in first half stoppage time, the evening got worse for Tunisia. The on field Mexican referee did not give a card against Ben Romdani. But the fourth official, another Mexican, Adonai Escobedo, asked our on pitch referee Fernando Hernandez Gomez to go to his review area and having reviewed it three or four times came back and showed that red to, to Ben Romdani. To the second half now. Syria with more of the ball, finding spaces and to good effect. And that is one of the goals of the tournament so far. There's been some very good ones. But the first touch out of his feet. Time to pick the spot and he picked it with precision. Mohamed Anes, the player who was involved in that incident that led to the red card for Ben Romdani. Naeem City came on and showed some vigour, a little bit of threat. This was the closest they came to a goal, really. There were further chances. Ottman saving from Bilal Ifa. It looked as if this header was destined for the back of the net. He reacted well. Syria ultimately went on to claim the prize. They're right in the mix for the race for the quarterfinals. The first shock of this Arab Cup Qatar 2021, Syria 2, Tunisia 0. So the group standings, the United Arab Emirates would have been expecting to have been through to the quarterfinals with a game to spare. That's not the case. A surprise win for Syria, and they play Mauritania in the last match on Monday. The UAE will face Tunisia on Monday. We could have three teams finishing on six points. Very exciting group. I well, hope you've enjoyed our coverage from the very impressive Al Bight Stadium in Al Khor City. From myself, Kevin Keatings, and all the team. Until the next time, it's goodbye.